What's up, guys? I'm sorry I couldn't be there right now, but I had some job shadowing to do at the police department. I did my presentation on John Roland Ridge and his fam famous novel, The Life and Adventures of Joaquin Rita. Biography. He was born on March 19, 1827, to a Cherokee father named John, also John Ridge. And he came from a prominent family within the Cherokee Nation, which made him a very influential figure. And John Muller Ridge's mother was named Sarah Bird Northrop. John Muller Ridge was raised in the Cherokee, name, uh, Cherokee Nation within Georgia for most of his life until he was forced to move out west because his father and his grandfather, Major Ridge, signed the 1835 Treaty of Dakota. The Treaty of Dakota was also called the Treaty Party, and basically this was a mutual deal between the United States and the Cherokee Nation. The United States in this deal would gain lands that the Cherokee owned within Georgia, and in return, they would compensate the Cherokee with about $5 million in today's money. Well, of course, the United States did not end up paying up, and they seized the lands from the Cherokee anyway, and many of them had to move out west and were forced to move away. And in doing so, this created the Trail of Tears where many of them ended up dying traveling. Um, during this time, during the 19th century, after this treaty, there was two factions within the Cherokee Nation. There was one faction that agreed with the Treaty of Dakota, and there was one faction that didn't agree with the Treaty of Dakota. And this was led by John Ross, and he's important because he basically saw anybody that agreed with the Treaty of Dakota as basically evil and uh, traitors. And he saw the Ridges, John Roland Ridges family, as traitors and had a deep hatred for them for agreeing with the treaty. And later on, he would end up going to their family home and he would kill John Roland Ridges' father, grandfather, and one of his cousins. And this would actually stay with John Roland Ridge for the rest of his life and would deeply represent that for his work. After this tragic massacre, um, John Roland Ridge, his family were moved to Fayetteville, Arkansas by his mom. And when he got there, his mom, from 1843 to 1845, sent John Roland Ridge to the Great Barrington School in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, where he studied Greek and Latin. And this is where he really got his uh, very, uh, his love for poetry and his general love for literature in general. So after his studies, he, went, he joined a local newspaper and began publishing poetry under the name of Yellowbird. And you might be wondering what Yellowbird means. Yellowbird basically means, is basically uh, a, Cherokee, a Cherokee representation because in the Cherokee community, uh, they would give all the children Cherokee names and basically these names would be representations of an object, a thing, or an action. His Cherokee name represented Yellowbird, which he went under for most of his poetry and his one and famous novel, The Life and Adventures of Joaquin Maritza. Um, in 1847, while in Massachusetts, he met a woman named Elizabeth Wilson, and he would actually stay with her for the rest of his life. And in 1848, they had a child named Alice. In 1849, he got in a confrontation, and this fact, uh, this uh, little detail will, is actually pretty important because it's pre it pretty much marks a very distinctive path of his life where he would actually end up for the rest of his life. Um, in 1849, John Ridge got in a confrontation with a guy named David Wells, who in a, I guess, an instinct to pay, uh, mutilated his prized famous horse that he, uh, John Roland Ridge cared about. And in a confrontation, John Roland Ridge ends up shooting him. And another fact is actually believed that David Wells was a uh, Ridge assassin who was there at the massacre of John Roland Ridge's uh, father and grandfather. And it was also found out that David Wells was a supporter of John Ross in general, which was, as you remember, uh, he, he was part of the faction that disagreed with the treaty and fought anybody that disagreed were traitors. Um, after this, he ends up moving to California because uh, he thought that uh, Massachusetts, the Massachusetts province would not give him a fair trial because he was of Cherokee descent. And... During that time, there was a stigma against uh, anybody of Cherokee descent and any other tribe. 
and he, he felt like he was not going to get a fair trial. So he moves to California and ends up joining the Gold Rush, which started in 1846. And basically, the Gold Rush was basically uh, basically a, like a scam, and they it basically offered anybody that joined that they would become a very fortunate person and they would make a lot of money. And John Roland Rich ends up joining it, thinking he's going to make a lot of money, and it ended up not happening because usually ten times out of ten, nobody would make any money from it because it was basically like a fake type of stigma in the society during that time. Um, once he gets to California. In 1854, he publishes The Life and Adventures of Joaquin Morita, and it actually became a very popular novel within the United States due to its uh, violent and fear-inducing nature that it caused within the, the public in California and many other states. And in 1857 to 1862, he worked as an editor for several Californian newspapers, which included the California Express, and the Sex San, San, Francisco, San Francisco Herald. And uh, he wrote, during the 1850s, he wrote many different po uh, poems, which include the Mount Shasta, which is actually a pretty good poem, and it's uh, one of his more rather famous poetry that he wrote during his life. Um, during his later life, he became a political advocate for the Democratic Party, and due to this, he would have a deep, disrespect uh disrespectful connotation towards the republican party which really contradicted most of what his purpose of life was for and uh in 1867 he ends up dying of encephalitis encephalitis is basically brain fever and the next year in 1868 a collection of poems are published but nothing overshadows his one and true and greatest novel the life and adventures of joaquin marita uh, some interesting facts about John Roland Ridge is he's considered the first Native American novelist, and he, to some, he made the first novel within the California state with his novel, The Life and Adventures of Joaquin Rita. Um, it, another interesting fact, he also died at the young age of 40 years old due to encephalitis, as I said. Um, among his people, he's also considered a very tragic figure due to the massacre and many of different many different like aspects of his life, like I mentioned before. Um, also, another interesting fact: he came from a long line of influential Cherokee figures, most notably his father and grandfather John John Ridge and Major Ridge, who were a big part of the Treaty of Dakota and the Trail of Tears, as we know. Um, also another interesting fact, from his novel, The Life and Adventures of Waki Marita, he ends up making no money due to illegal publications and not really a monetization of many of the books being published back then. So he ends up making no money from it, which is kind of sad because it's a pretty, pretty good book. So I don't know. Um, quotes. This is one of his famous quotes. It comes from the book, The Life and Adventures of Waki Marita, and it basically reads, uh, there is nothing so dangerous in its consequences as injustice to individuals. Whether it arise from prejudice of color or from any other source, that a wrong done to one man is a wrong done to society and to the world. This is what uh, his novel looked like when it was published, and it probably still looks the same. Um, yeah. The Life and Adventures of Joaquin Marita, back, this is the background of it and why I was wrote and stuff like that. Um, this book is based on the real-life outlaw Joaquin Morita and his gang who violently robbed and raided uh, throughout the West. And most of what is known derives from myth. And it's actually, during this time, believed to be a mixture of like four to three different stories and different kinds of outlaws mixed into one. But nothing's really known because most of what is derived comes from myth, as it said. Um, the story itself is focusing on the racial, racial tension that existed within California and many states. And this is among Mexican individuals and Ameri uh, white individuals. And this is due to the fact that this, ha this happened directly after the Mexican-American War, which was kind of brutal and really put a, you know, a wall between, uh, you know, everybody's love for each other back then of different races. And, uh... He also wrote this story to show how violence can change an individual and how due to this violence, a person can mount a response 
And this is sort of like in representation to his life as well, you could say, based on what the events that's happened to him throughout his life. But, and also this is what uh, the depiction of Joaquin Morita looks like. This is also what is described within the book, a artist type representation of it. If you read it, it says he has long, silky black hair and he's pretty good looking. And this is pretty much a representation of what he looks like. Uh, the Life and Adventure of Joaquin Marie Discussion. So I'm going to read the question and feel free to pause it and have the discussion. And after that, I will give my take on the subject itself. So uh, could you consider Joaquin Marita as a romantic hero? Why or why not? Um, I consider Joaquin Marita a romantic hero due to the fact that throughout the story, you can see he really takes on a leadership role throughout the book uh, over the bandits. And also the fact that he he has an opposition to society due to the events that's happened through for his life, and also um, he makes his own laws. He does what's right, or not really what's right, but he does what's unnatural to what common law is. So that's pretty much the definition of a romantic hero. And next discussion question: Does the author and the narrator seem to sympathize with Joaquin Morita? Why do you think that's the case? Feel free to pause the video, as I said again. Um, my What I feel about this is um, I feel like the author and Eric do seem to sympathize with Joaquin Morita, and that's for the fact that you see a man basically be dealt with the worst cards in life and basically bad events happen to him constantly, which eventually causes him to snap due to the violence that's being perpetrated against him. And for the author, which is John Roland Ridge, you see that how he's a Cherokee and basically all the violent things that's happened to him over his lifetime, where his, his family gets massacred, then he's constantly being racial, uh, he, he constantly gets racial, racial, racially discriminated against and he basically mounts a response to that. And that's basically why these two sympathize with the character, Joaquin Marita. All right, what message was the author trying to convey for Joaquin Maria? Do you think it helped reveal some truths about society then? Does it still apply now? Feel free to pause the video, as I said again, to have a discussion. Um, I think the message they were trying to convey for Joaquin Marita is that violence and discrimination against a person can really have some damaging effects against them and can usually cause them to basically really mount a response. And, and it's kind of a you know touchy subject in its in of itself. Do you think it helped reveal some truths about society then? I think it really reveals that there was a lot of violent tension between different races back in the 19th century and it was a really bad time for people a really bad time for people to get along due to so many wars and so many different tragic events. Um, does it still apply now? I don't think it apply I don't think it applies now cuz maybe a little bit, but I feel for the most part, most people don't see race and they don't, and they get along. And I think most people enjoy everybody's company, no matter what they look like, you know? Next discussion question. Think about John Roland Ridge's background. What correlation can be made between that and this story? Um, basically this story follows the bandit Joaquin Morita and how one event where his brother and him are basically discriminated against constantly and eventually his brother gets hanged and he gets lashed lashed down on his back against a tree and this causes him to go on a lifelong crusade of raiding and violently uh, just being violent throughout the West and raiding people and shooting people that he finds to be um, violent and you know un, uh, like very mean and stuff like that and this correlates with uh john roland ridges because john roland ridge is constantly discriminated against because he's cherokee and his his family gets massacred um he gets in a confrontation with uh a david kales and this basically causes another bit of dis discrimination because he doesn't feel like he can get a fair trial within his own like living standards and his own state and his own home. So this really correlates with Joaquin Morita because he feels the same exact way. And this is basically his representation. Even though John Roland Ridge doesn't take the same route, it basically mirrors that. So, and that's all I got to say guys. So thank you for watching and uh, good luck on the quiz.